Blessed be God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in our souls. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made 
and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. <laughs> together that portion of Psalm 146 found in the bulletin. Alleluia, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. Thank you. 
to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, this is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Christ. our minds and think through them, take our lips and speak through them, take our lives and live through them, take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. Amen. Well, we now really are almost at the end. That is to say, if you were here last week, you know that last week on our journey with Christ towards Jerusalem, we reached Jericho, which was the last big city, before we go up into the hills to the encounter in Jerusalem. Today's reading skips over what happens immediately afterwards and goes to the end of Jesus' confrontation with the authorities in the temple. So we've skipped over between last week and this, the journey up the hills into the city, the entry into the city on Palm Sunday, and the first three confrontations that he's had with the authorities there. And now he has this one. In those confrontations, they have tried to trap him it, about the issue of uh, taxes and authority and the resurrection. And he has skillfully churned their questions around on them. So today, this one last questioner comes up, and he asks this question which is fraught with meaning because there are hundreds of commandments in the Hebrew scripture, and there is always a source of debate among rabbis about which of these, how you prioritize all those commandments. And which one is the greatest is, is a hot issue in, in, uh, among the authorities in Jerusalem. So this last one, too, is a tricky question, because if the answer's wrong, he could be identified with one of the political parties or the other, and therefore subject to charges of heresy or to being arrested. So when he answers this question, Rabbi, which commandment is the greatest? The first thing he does is to quote the heart of what's called the Shema, the, the heart of the uh, Jewish confession of faith. The Lord your God is one God. I have no other God but Him. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And at that moment, the, the, the authorities say, 
excellent, right answer. In order to do that, you have to worship in the temple, you have to pay for your sacrifices, you have to honor the authorities. That's what it means to love the Lord your God. It is to put yourself into the act of worship of God in your heart and in your daily practice. And for them, it means participating in the, the system of the temple in Jerusalem. But that's not where he ends. That quote, of course, comes from Deuteronomy. He then takes a passage from the book of Leviticus, which is quite different. And the book of Leviticus has a long section about treating the poor with justice, about treating your neighbor and the stranger with kindness. And that section ends with these words, you shall love the Lord your, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So by adding you shall love your neighbor to yourself to the first part, he is in fact convicting the authorities because this is exactly the charge that he has had against them for his whole ministry, which is that they are so wrapped up in ritual and tradition and, and the offering system that they have forgot the human connection with one another, with the um, people of Israel, and most particularly with the poor. They have forgotten the call to justice, forgotten the call to kindness and inclusion. And in when today's reading ends, it says after that they could ask him no more questions because they understood that he has once and for all convicted them of exactly the charge that he's had against them all along. They may love the Lord. They may worship the Lord splendidly, but they do not in the same moment love their neighbor as themselves. So that ends all of their charges against him. He has won the battle, if you might say. You and I, you and I know this saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and your neighbor is yourself. We think it's all one thing. But because we know it, it makes it more disposable. And the charge against the authorities is the same charge that we need to hear for ourselves. Who is it we love and how do we love them? What does it mean to love God? You know in your heart that, that you would love to love God, that you would love to live a life that that's open to God's spirit. You know in your heart that you would love to love your neighbor. You've tried to do that. You and I have tried to do this because here we are. But we're not very good at it, are we? We're not very good at it, but, but still we keep at it. Now today, we are going to baptize Avery and Cameron. And there are all sorts of things we can say about baptism. But the most central thing we're saying is that in this rite, they are becoming a part of a communion, of a community that holds at its heart the love of God and love of man. You, Avery, and Cameron are being baptized into a community that cares passionately about the love of God and the love of neighbor. We are not very good at it. We haven't been good at it all along. We probably won't be good at it tomorrow, but it's the core of our identity to strive towards that kind of loving living. And that's really the purpose of the church. 
is to continue to hold before us that vision of love of God and love of neighbor that is at the heart not just of the meaning of our lives, but it is at, we believe, at the heart of the universe. So we say to Avery and Cameron, welcome. Welcome, we hope you're better than we are. We hope you will call us more truly into our meaning, into this meaning. And, and we pray that you will help us to lead more faithful, more loving lives as you grow more and more into the life of this community. May it be too for all of us here today that in this service of baptism we are recalled to our true purpose and let that purpose become central to our life day in and day out. Amen. Amen. So now we will proceed. Candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Avery Joseph to receive the sacrament of baptism. I, I present Cameron Ryan, Ryan to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for the child's for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these children in their lives in Christ? We will. Well then, let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, the creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will with God's help. 
Let us now pray for these children who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your, ho- with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who hear are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Avery Joseph, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Avery Joseph, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Never and Ryan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Never and Ryan, you are seated. Amen. Holy God, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these children the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit, 
with them inquiring and discerning hearts, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess that they be Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and to share with us in his eternal priesthood. And the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Does she have anything to say today? She usually does. I was sitting down because I didn't get it today. So, welcome everybody. Happy Monday morning. First thing to say is that actually our evangelism and outreach ministry is doing good work this evening on the eve of Pop of All Saints. We say that. There's going to be some community facts for our community. Um, so if anyone would like to participate in that, uh, that's going to start running at 5 o'clock. So if you want to drop off some candy or just see what wonderful costume people might be wearing, uh, please join us for that. Um, also, the food pantry, um, our Latino brothers and sisters have really taken this over and they need our help. Um, so it's just the third, it's the third Saturday from 10 to 12 um, uh, that we really need to make a commitment. And I'm thinking if there's like six of us that are willing to do this and do it two by two, um, our commitment would only be like every three months. So if you're interested in that, this ministry, I think it's really important for our community. Come see me and we can try to pull something together. Um, and our education ministry, Christian education ministry, have been working hard this week. So I'm going to have Evelyn make an announcement about that. Yeah, um, we're really excited then. First Sunday in December, December 5th, we're going to have church school. And um, we know the kids at this point are excited about the coming of Santa, but we're hoping to instill the excitement about the coming of Christ. And uh, in that respect, we're going to sing a song. Maybe you can just be educated when you sing the songs, <laughs> but they'll be listening. And uh, we're going to have a snack, and we're going to have a Bible, short, very short Bible lesson, and we're going to make Advent trees. So, um, yeah, um, they tell me the time passes quickly. I haven't taught Sunday school in a few years. So, oh, it sounds like fun. And we have four people on the committee that are very excited and have a lot of input. Okay? So, we hope that we want to keep this time together and make fun. Thank you, sir. The next um, ministry that's been working hard is the stewardship ministry. Um, I don't know if Susan would like to say any words. So, I'm not sure what to say. Let's see. Um, we are planning to begin our stewardship um, ministry on the same day that our new priest comes. 
Um, so we'll be um, going through um, different people who come to speak at different services. Um, and we're just really trying to get a handle on what does it even mean to how does spirituality even mean? And, and how do we um, see it elder in our lives, but also and then how do we bring it back to this this place too? So um, look forward to people coming and talking to me to share their own stories and and then of course we'll go out you know, standard procedures and stuff, but um, yeah, think about what is it that you get from, gain from, what do you receive by coming here, what are the gifts that you, you have, and then how do you then, when you are here for the person, you can then give back. So that's the message. Um, there's also going to be a fundraiser in November, um, so you'll be seeing um, uh, baskets, there's 10 great baskets, so we hope everyone can participate in that, it's going to be great. Um, and so next Sunday, um, as some of you may or may not know, we are in transition, and we get to say happy birthday and happy retirement to our wonderful brother Mike. Um, so that will be a, a joint service with our Latino brothers and sisters at 1030. So it's a time change, and I believe we set our clocks at two. So <laughs> not enough complications in our <laughs> But please come and liturgically celebrate uh, the next steps in his life. And in our life, um, here in the church, essentially we met with the bishop this week, um, and he's very excited about our lay ministry. And he has approved our um, accepting of Pastor Sarah Sachs. Um, her first Sunday will be November 14th. Um, her time with us will be less than Mike's, so there is a big focus on pastoral, lay pastoral ministry, lay evangelism and outreach, um, and the bishop is very supportive of us in that. Um, so, Anyway, lots of great stuff happening, and we hope that uh, some of you that are visiting will come on back. Lots of energy, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. A lot of stuff going on. I want to exercise my quiet uh, just one last time and introduce you to one of our guests today, <laughs> who is Azariah Hubbard, my youngest uh, friend. Right, as Ryan, he's wearing his very nice uh, frog suit. <laughs> very grateful that you came to be with us today. Let us enjoy a good Thanksgiving as the offering of our life and place. Oh, that's his father. <laughs>
Particularly mindful of Ernie and Dottie Ayotte, Mimi Hallow, Harry Gradich, Anna Benford, Ernest Martin, Rita Lima, Joe and Ruth Wilkinson, Francis Dean, Nicholas Cher Chili, Kwame Walker, Bernal Biz Albizu, Barbara Miguel, Pat Bailey, Fernando Albizu, Eleanor Hicks, Nancy Griswold, Barbara Hawkins, Jane Hubby, and Curtis Smith. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven 
who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love that you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Thank you. 
you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with the gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we carry the grace of this meal deeply in our hearts this week and in all our lives, bringing God's peace and joy, forgiveness, and thanksgiving to those with whom we live, to those whom we meet, and to all who are in need in this world. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator of Christ and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks. Thanks.